Okay, n determine a c to the nth degree. What if we have more than just one redundant? Uh, well, if we have more than just one redundant, uh, we have to set up a system of equations, a system of simultaneous equations. So I've got my compatibility equations here. Uh, the deltas represent the real deflections, delta sub 1, 0, delta sub 2, 0, etc. Uh, the x's represent the redundance, or the unknown forces, x sub 1, x sub 2, all the way through to x sub n. Uh, the little deltas, delta sub 1, 1, delta sub 1, 2, etc., those represent the flexibility coefficients. Uh, the subscripts, uh, delta sub 1, 2, for example, uh, this means at point 1 due to the force at point 2. So I've got this system of uh, what look like n equations and n unknowns. Uh, remember that the deltas represent the real deflections, the x is the redundance, and the little deltas represent the flexibility coefficients. Okay, so I can set this up in matrix form, can't I? Okay, so if I set it up in matrix form, I'll have this matrix equation like so. Okay, so the deltas, I put all that in a column matrix. Uh, the little deltas, the flexibility coefficients, I put that in an n by n square matrix. And then the redundance, uh, another column matrix, x sub 1 through x sub n. And that's equal to the zero vector. Okay, so uh, if you have a giant zero and a little tail inside, that means the zero vector. I can write this in a more compact form uh, like this. Uh, uh, delta sub zero plus flexibility coefficient matrix times the redundance is equal to the zero matrix. So uh, sometimes the, the, the deltas are unknown, the real deflections. Sometimes the redundants are unknown, the x's. So uh, you would have to manipulate the matrices to solve for one of those two unknowns. If you really do have a high degree of indeterminacy in your structural system, uh, your choice of redundance can have an effect on the level of difficulty as well as the accuracy of the solutions. Uh, however, uh, rarely do we use the method of consistent deformations, also known as the flexibility method, for high degrees of indeterminacy. Uh, when you take a second semester of structural analysis, you'll learn better methods to deal with this.